this is hard. You know, we're, as I'm sure we can all agree, we're, we're living through this unprecedented age of interventionism, of monetary uh, interventionism. Um, we, we, we've had monetary interventionism for um, clearly 100 years here, but far more. Um, but again, what's special about today is sort of the degree of it. We're on uncharted waters. Um, you know, there, and the, the scariest thing about this in many ways is, um, of course, we know the Fed has been doing all it can do. We've got rates pinned at zero. Um, we've never seen this before. It, it's, we should all be um, very scared about this environment. Um, you know, I, the other weird thing about this is there still isn't consensus um, about what's wrong with this. Uh, we don't really seem to care about what's wrong with this. Um, for instance, uh, in, the, in, in the Republican uh, debates, primary debates, we're not even talking about it. I think, to me, that's, that's extraordinary. Um, and it, I, I don't know if it, it's telling us that um, nothing is really going to be solved about this, but it's, it's not, there's nothing like a crisis to sort of open our eyes to this. And I absolutely firmly believe that, that this is coming. Uh, maybe we can all agree on this. Um, there's a number of ways we could see it. We could, maybe we could talk about that. Um, a little bit, but you know, at the, at what the Fed is ultimately doing is it's it's is it's sort of squeezing us all into this trap. It's forcing us all to to chase yield, to extend for yield. This is what Wall Street is about. To, Wall Street today is about um, not fighting the Fed, going with the Fed. Um, you know, there are no there are no real independent um, investment themes out there. This is really all there is, and we're, we've all sort of been forced into doing this. And, and in doing that, you know, we're sort of the sheep, and, and the the Fed is sort of our shepherd, but um, you know, as, as Jung said, the, the shepherd's staff will turn into a rod of iron, um, and they will lead us to slaughter. So I think we need to be very, very, um, very, very aware of this. What would you guess that the next crisis? Again, okay, we we'll really put you uh, put you on the spot here. What would you guess? What form would you guess the next crisis will take, and when would you guess that it would happen? And of course, we are guessing here, obviously. Yeah. So the timing is the uh, billion-dollar. Uh, the billion dollar question. And because the timing is so hard, it's, it's very important that what we do now, we do in a way that uh, uh, strengthens our hand. You know, we, we, we don't want to be squeezed out of this because, again, the whole Fed game is about squeezing us out of, of, of fighting them. And we need strategies to f maybe not fight the Fed, to fade the Fed. Fighting the Fed would be being short right now on um, risk assets, and that is, uh, that would be a suicidal um, thing to do, I think, even right now. This isn't the way uh, um, to do it. But so there are a number of ways we want to preserve value. We want to be ready for um, uh, implementing a strategy. I would, I would call the greatest strategy, the greatest, the greatest basic investment theme there is, um, attributable to John D. Rockefeller, buy when blood is running in the streets. This is what we all need to be aware of. We need to do this. So we need to think of, of our next trade right now, not as the, the winning trade, not as the one that's going to make us all of our return, but as, the, as a means to that trade that's going to come when was the sort of um, liquidation of malinvestment um, that is coming. So we need to be able to, we can get into more specifics perhaps, but we need to um, have a strong hand. We need to think about doing something now that gives us a means toward the great generational trade that's to come. Could you give us a, a couple of, of general examples um, of, that, of that kind of position that you that you'd want to hold? Yeah, so we know that um, uh, throughout human history, uh, gold medals have been um, the store of value. And this idea of fiduciary media is something that's not um, decreed by governments. It's something that happens organically. We, we've, you know, um, uh, millennium, millennia ago, it, it was cattle because it was something that was very saleable. It, uh, currency needed to, uh, fiduciary media needed to be saleable. Um, it became gold, it became gold-backed currency, it became fiat currency. But we need to think about something like that that's a store of value. It's not capital, let's be very clear, that when we invest in, 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 in things like precious metals, it's not capital. It's, we know it's not productive. We can't all spend the rest of our lives just owning gold. Civilization would come to an end. Um, capital is something that creates, um, you know, it's the tools for future productivity. It's the way civilization progresses. But what we need to think about now is not that trade by which we make our return, by which we, civilization progresses, but it's how we allow ourselves to make that trade later. So, you know, a store, stores of value would be a way to do that, you know. Even, I know it's hard, even um, um, currency, um, our currency is being systematically destroyed, um, to, but to be in short-term cash is even better than reaching out um, for, uh, 
risk assets. You know, I mean, the dumbest trade in the world today, what makes you feel like the greatest fool, obviously it would be short the market, but just being in cash. You're, you're, the Fed is making you feel, look, and feel like an idiot. That might be one reason why short term um, it is the right trade. We just have to remember when we think about precious metals that, that is, there's, there's probably no better long term sort of store of value. Maybe certain agricultural, sustainable agricultural land is, is even better because it's also productive. But what we got to remember is, you know, when, when the liquidation happens, which it inevitably is going to happen, just it's going to collapse by, the debt will collapse by its own weight. Um, it doesn't need the Fed necessarily to pop that bubble. What that is, is that is the destruction of dollars. And we have all this, this currency that's been created, all this uh, money that's been created out of thin air. And when all that debt is liquidated, particularly when it's force liquidated, um, you might as well put all this cash in a big pile and light it on fire. So th this is somewhat deflationary. So we have these cross currents, and it's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard to set on precious metals for the collapse that is, it, it will happen inevitably. It's going to be even harder to sit in cash. But the, the important thing is to focus, um, uh, is what we focus on, to focus on uh, um, dry powder, focus on um, uh, retaining, uh, retaining value as best we can through this.